Hey folks, this video is to announce that I've updated Vario, which is my GLSL compiler. The update is actually a full rewrite, because a little while ago a friend of mine was asking how Vario worked, and I opened the source code, preparing to give him a quick tour, and realized that the code was absolutely disgusting. That, as well as the fact that I had started developing some features on the Keppel side of things, which really belonged in the compiler, prompted me to take a month and a half aside and just rewrite the compiler itself. So what I'm going to do now is just step through a few of the new features and how they're integrated into Kebble. Okay, so the first new feature is that you can now separate shader stages out from the pipeline itself. So how we used to have to do things is we could define a pipeline, like here. And for each of the stages, we'd specify the type of the stage and then the actual code for that stage. What we can do now, as shown in this other example, is we can just name the stages we want to use and then define those stages separately. So as you can see, def v shader and def f shader define these two different implementations. They're compiled separately and so you can use them in multiple pipelines. Another thing we can now do is not only separate the shader stages themselves but also functionality. So we can define functions that are separate from any particular stage or any particular pipeline and are only included if they're used. So here you can see DefSFun for Sphere and for Jelly. This code down here actually is a small ray marcher, and these are the distance functions that are being used. Currently, we're using Sphere, and so you can see what's being drawn over on the right hand side. And if I go and run GL pull and then the name of the pipeline, you can see that the code brought back is using the Sphere function, but doesn't include Jelly because it's not currently being used. Just to prove the point again, I can go over here, change sphere to jelly in the two places that it's used. Oops. Recompile, and you can see immediately that the code has been taken the code has taken effect, but also that when we let's just go and GL pull again, that the function that's included is now the implementation for jelly, not for sphere. This means you can have entire standard libraries written full of shader functionality that you don't have to worry about being included or uploaded until it's actually used by the code that's needed on the GPU. I've gone ahead and integrated this into Keppel, which is what you're seeing on the left hand side. Um, when Vario translates now, uh, it returns an object which not only includes the GLSL source code, as you'd expect, but also other information such as what types were used and what functions were used from this batch. This means that it's easy to work out what depends on what. And so Keppel knows that if you recompile something, to go and recompile all the things that depend on it. So if we go and make a change to Jelly here, so change this to cause, you can see over here that it recompiled Jelly, but it knew that PROG1 depends on this, so it recompiled that as well, and then PROG1 obviously uploaded itself to the GPU when it finished compiling. And so this works with multiple functions, functions that use functions, and all of this from separated stages and pipelines themselves. So you can just go ahead and play as if you're messing around with normal Lisp code. I'm aware that the video capture I'm using at the moment is making this output look very grainy and choppy, which is a shame. So what I think I'll do for now is just stop this and carry on with the last couple of features. One thing it's exposed now is a proper macro system, so you can defs macros and use them in your code. At this point I'm using it to unroll um, a loop which is calculating the normals and thus the shadows on the objects being used in the Raymarcher. Also, there's a new type system included in Vario, and this allows you to inherit from existing types and provide extra information. And the reason for this may not seem obvious at first, because GLSL can only understand the types that it knows, so why bother adding more? One of the things we can do with this, though, is to make things more pleasant on the Lisp side. So there are, for example, a huge number of uh, texture functions in GLSL. And by adding a couple of extra types, like say we could um, index into a texture and get the image object, something that doesn't exist as a type concept before the very recent implementations of GLSL. And then we can use, say, a ref on that to get information 
from this image. Now, the easiest way to do this is just to create an image type. And even though it's not really understood by GLSL, as long as it gets resolved to something that GLSL does understand, by the time it actually gets uploaded to the GPU, everything's fine. I don't have any decent examples to show you of this right now. So what I'll do is I'll leave that and then possibly in a future video when the texture implementation is done, just show off how that works. Okay, so that's all I've been doing recently. Um, I'm hoping to actually get back to work on Keppel now, uh, that this is more stable and go ahead and make some more effects and try and find some decent abstractions for some other concepts to make just general coding real time more pleasant. All right, have a good one.